crafty friends it's your girl Courtney Brickner welcome to my YouTube channel I am so happy that you're here and I have a little something that I wanted to share with you my new piece of equipment my heat press from heat press nation it is the signature series shore pressure 16 by 24 inches I wasn't even looking for that one I went to buy the 16 by 20 inch but then I saw this and I was like, ah, oh, I think I need to get that one because why not? If you, a few more inches could be, you know, a really nice addition to your craft room. So today what I wanted to do was share some of the features that I really like about this. Now I'm moving up from another heat press nation, um, heat press. It was the 15 by 15 and there was nothing wrong with it, but I felt like I ran into some situations where it would have been nice to have a bigger heat press. So I decided to go ahead and get this one. This one actually has the shore pressure, which didn't, that wasn't on my last one. So I wanted to show you kind of what that does and just show you some of the features that I really like about it. I also want to share with you how I actually broke it two weeks after using it. Um, not a really good situation because it was brand new, it cost a lot of money, and it wouldn't turn on. So stay tuned for what I did, how I broke it, how I fixed it. Um, it is fixed now. So I'll share with you so that hopefully you don't make that same mistake and have that issue if you're in the market for a new heat press. And I just wanted to share what I like about it. So if you think you want to learn a little bit more about Heat Press Nation, Heat Press, which I really do like, then stick around because I'm gonna tell you all about it. So let's go. First and foremost, it is very wide. A lot of the 16 by 24 inch presses, um, you know, they're actually longer. I like that it's wider than some of the other presses because I don't have a lot of place for it to sit. Now, when I was doing research on it, it said that it was 27 inches deep. So I thought for sure I wasn't gonna even be able to put it on this table. I thought that I'd have to turn it sideways because it said that it was 24 inches wide, but it said it was 27 inches deep. So my table is 24 inches. So I thought there's no way I'm going to be able to set it here. But look, it actually fits perfectly on this table. So this is the side view. You can see the bottom here fits right at the end of the table. So I believe the 27 inches that they were talking about was this right here. So yes, this hangs out a bit over the counter, but the back of it is flush with the back of the counter and the bottom right here is not even flush. It's still got, um, you know, an inch or so, but it fits perfectly and it's very stable. One of the features that I really like is this secondary arm. It just makes it a lot easier to pull the press down when you're getting ready to press something. And it comes, it's not attached on there, so you just need to do these little screws right here. Let me give you a better angle of the screws. Right here, these two screws right there, you just take those out and you can attach the secondary arm. So I do like that feature. It's funny because on my old press, it also had that, but I never actually um, attached it because I, it just didn't really seem like I needed to. But this one is much heavier top platen, so I feel like it is much easier to open and close the press with that secondary arm. This press actually has the sure pressure, so that's this little spot right here. When you are adjusting the pressure, you can see the numbers go up there. And when you turn it back the other way, the numbers go down. This makes it really easy to remember what pressure setting you had on a particular project. So you can write down, you don't have to just write light or medium pressure, you can actually write the number down so you have an easier time remembering all the pressure settings of all of the items that you are making. Back here, you've got your control panel. And if you push this middle button, you push the up arrow, you're gonna have Fahrenheit. If you push the down arrow, you're gonna have Celsius. So switch it to Fahrenheit. Push the middle button again, and you'll be able to change your set temperature using the up and down arrows. Press the middle button again, and you're able to change the time settings 
And then when you push the middle button for the last time, it shows your present value that your press is right now, the present value that you've got set for your time settings, and then it's got the set value. So you can see that I've set the, the temperature to 356, but the present value is 218. So it's not quite ready to press yet. Our set value for the time is 40 seconds, and the present value is 40 seconds also. And then this counter number down here, that tells you how many things you've made um, using this press so far. So it's a new press for me. I've only made 27 things at the moment. Over on this side is the emergency release button. So if you have your press down and you need to open it, it doesn't open automatically while it's pressing. So you press the emergency release button and then it opens up automatically. Another nice feature is the roll out drawer. So you're not gonna risk burning your hands when you place your item in. So it opens and closes. So you can open it, put your blank on, and then you close the drawer, use the secondary arm to help you close it, and then you press it down. And then you'll see that your timer actually automatically starts to count down right when you close the press. It is closed right now. You're not able to open it. If you need to, you can press the emergency release, but it's nice that when this press is finished counting down and it gets down to zero, it actually opens automatically and it's really smooth. So it's got the three seconds and then the press will just open as soon as it down, as soon as it gets down to zero. Oh, <laughs> the reason that it didn't open all the way up right then is because my pressure was so low. So let's turn my pressure up because I was just showing you guys before how it worked. But if your pressure is actually too low, then it won't automatically open. So I bumped up the pressure. Now we'll see what happens. And when you have the right pressure, how it opens automatically. So that's actually a good thing. I'm glad that I did that. So you know that if your press is not opening, then you probably don't have enough pressure set on it for that particular item. Disregard my wall. I'm working on some stuff. So <laughs> I've got some things that I need to touch up. So don't worry about that. Don't look over there. There you go. You see that it opens automatically and it's a really smooth opening press. It doesn't jerk open. It's just nice and smooth. I love it. It actually does not come with this Teflon sheet on it. I purchased that extra. It comes with just this black pad on the press when you get it, but I just purchased this little extra protection to slide on. So it just slides right on top, a little Teflon sheet to protect the bottom platen. And that's it. So I filmed the first part of that video right when I got the press. Now I need to give you a little update on what happened after having the press for a few weeks. It actually would not turn on at all. Now, when I first got it, it did have an issue. I the control panel was like flickering. I was like, oh, that's a little weird, but I didn't really think much of it. I just thought it was, I don't know, just a little odd. Um, but then one day it didn't even turn on and it was frustrating because I had a big order to fill that day, but it wouldn't turn on. So I called Heat Press Nation and they informed me that this press, this baby, Big Bertha, which I've named her because she's beast, um, it needs 20 amps in order to get the power that it needs to work. Now, a regular outlet only has 15 amps. Therefore, I had it plugged into the regular outlet. Now, there was nothing else plugged into it. I didn't have it plugged into an extension cord, nothing. It was plugged directly into the wall right here. Um, so I thought that that was fine, but it didn't have enough power. So therefore the on off switch actually shorted and that's why it wouldn't turn on. So what I did to fix it, Heat Press Nation sent me a new on off switch. Um, I had to take off the back of the press, um, take out the current on off switch and then replace it with the new one. 
I did that. Then they also said that I needed to use a surge protector or get another breaker or another outlet on my breaker, like the electrical panel, um, that was 20 amps. I, I'm not close to the electrical panel. I am going to have to obviously make an update with the electrical that is supplied to my craft room. But for the time being, the way that I've been able to fix it, they said that I could use a surge protector. I looked everywhere for a surge protector that was 20 amps. I could not find one. I did, however, speak with the people at Home Depot. Um, there was an electrician that I was talking with and he said that if there was another spot in the house and he recommended the laundry room, the, uh, the washing machine is actually on a 30 amp um, plug. So if I could move my heat press, this is what he suggested, if I move my heat press to the laundry room, then I could plug it into that outlet and then I would be good. This baby's not going anywhere because she's heavy, like for real, for real heavy. I cannot move it. Um, so that was not an option, but I did find a 20 amp extension cord. So I plugged that in to the washing machine outlet. And let me just show you how big this extension cord is. Now it took me a little bit, a regular extension cord does not work. Most of them that I saw were like <clears throat> 12, 13, 14 amps and you need 20. So this is a 20 amp extension cord. And let me just show you this surge protector here. The difference in thickness of the, um, the cords. And then look how little this is. Really small um, plug. This one is very large and it is because it supplies a lot more power than your regular extension cord. So that is what I've been doing. I um, plug in my heat press into this 20 amp extension cord and it's been working fabulously. I have to say, now I know this is not my long-term solution, but for now, until I get my electrical upgraded in order to supply the amount of power that this machine needs, um, that's the fix that I'm using in the meantime. So I just wanted to let you know, if you are in the market for a larger heat press, make sure that you check out the, um, the power requirements that it needs because you're going to break your press <laughs> like I did. Don't recommend it. But we're all good to go now. Other than that, it was a little bit of a rocky stir because I messed it up. I love it. The sure pressure is one of my favorite features. The slide out drawer, it's gotta be second. And the secondary arm, which I didn't even use on my old press, but this one is a lot you know, heavier, so it's nice to have that. So that is what I think about my Signature Series heat press, 16 by 24 inches. If you enjoyed today's video, you learned something new, you like, my channel, please don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on those notifications so that you don't miss anything crafty because I'm here every week bringing you crafty or DIY content. I don't know. I figure it out when, each week when it happens, but I know your time is valuable. I appreciate you spending some of it with me and I will be here next week with something else for you. Until then, stay crafty, my friends.